Hello everyone! Today's video is a viewer request and that is on gradient paint finishes. What are they? How do you do them? Why do you want to do it? First off, a gradient paint finish is when you have two colors blend into each other gradually, hence creating a gradient paint finish. Now, why you want to do a gradient paint finish is pretty simple. Sometimes, let's say if you're trying to do a oceanic effect, or maybe even a night sky effect, or something to that nature, you'll notice that different shades of blue in the ocean eventually get lighter till you end up on shore, so to speak, or in the night sky. You may start up at the horizon point and the light starts to get darker as you go higher up. Maybe some shades of blue, purple, etc, etc. So when you're doing this on a model kit finish or a Gundam or let's say even a diorama, being able to do a gradient finish is definitely something you want to be able to practice and perfect. It will broaden your horizons quite a bit. Another thing you can do with gradient paint finishes is get really creative by masking certain areas off and doing reverse finishes. I'm going to show you how to do that. So without further ado, let's get to the spray booth and let's get to painting. So the first thing you're gonna need are spoons. I have a couple of them right here. I don't know if I'm gonna end up using four spoons, but we'll see what we end up doing. You're going to need a couple of different thickness pinstriping tapes or masking tapes. These I got, I think at Michael's. I can't remember, I've had them for such a long time. And these are the ones I normally use. These are from Tamiya, I love these. You just want to make sure that when you put the tape down on whatever surface it is that you're going to be masking off that it's down really flat and not lifted in areas because then the paint will be able to get underneath and pool and it will look like crap. Also, I am using four different colors right here. Well, technically three I'm using gunmetal, orange, clear orange and flat black. So for a gradient paint finish, you generally want to have the air pressure for airbrushing that is I put it roughly around 30 PSI, but that's because I move a little bit quicker. 30 PSI, 20 PSI is fine. One of the main things you want to make sure of is that your paint is mixed properly. You want the right milky consistency. If it's too thick, the gradient effect is not going to look that blended. It's going to look a little splotchy and a little spotty. So make sure your paint has a good milky consistency to it. So the first thing we're going to do is take this spoon and we're going to just give it a nice even coat of orange. Nothing fantastic. Just a simple little orange. After the orange, we are going to load up our second spray cup with black. All right, so now I have cleaned the orange that was inside, loaded up the cup with some black, and now what I'm going to do is start at the base, top, bottom. It's really up to you, whatever you're painting. But I'm going to start for the sake of uh, this video at the base here and I'm going to pull back a bit, not too, too close, but back a bit. This is about roughly three inches and I'm going to start low and start to work my way up. And as you can see, it now has a gradient finish. It's not a complete line straight going across. If I want to make it a little bit more of a defined line, I can go closer. If I want to make it a little bit farther back, I can pull the spoon back and do it like that as well. So there's a lot of different ways you can angle this. I mean, if you want to have it to where the center gradiates out, you can kind of go up like this and now you have that gradient effect on the outside. Now this paint, I purposely did not mix thin enough so this way everybody can see what I'm talking about. You notice right there how it's not exactly a nice smooth pattern. You've got some paint splotches right there. That's what you want to try to avoid. So by mixing your paint thinner, not too thin, but thin enough and making sure your airbrush itself is nice and clean, you're not going to have those issues right there like that. However, for the sake of everybody's time here, I decided to go and spray both of these spoons gunmetal and this one flat black. My airbrush is cleaned out, everything's ready to go. This is the point where you have to decide what kind of designs you want to do. Now, granted, this video is about gradient finishes, which we're going to use this junky one right here just to prove a point. So the first thing that we're going to do, and mind you, I have no definitive plan here, I'm just going to kind of go with it. I'm going to start taking my various tapes and I'm going to lay them across the spoons that I've just painted. 
As you all can see right here, I have laid my little rudimentary designs out. No rhythm, no rhyme, just threw it down here so this way everybody gets an idea of what I'm talking about. The next thing we're gonna do is throw a layer of base coat over this. Now, the cool thing about it is, if you have a base metallic, you can mix both flat colors on here, or non-metallics, alongside clear colors. So you're adding a candy finish, basically. So the first thing I'm gonna do right now is move these out of the way. And we're gonna take this one and we're gonna throw, let's say, the gunmetal color. And then what we'll do is peel those layers of tape away and you're gonna see a different kind of gradient finish along with a top coat. Now, as far as the dry time with this, you don't want it to dry completely. You can, but you also run the risk if you lay the paint too thick, when you try to peel it off, the paint is gonna to stick to the tape and it's gonna take the actual paint with it. And that's not gonna look good. The other thing that I did on this one is I did not adhere this down completely. This is again, just to show everybody common mistakes, what can happen. So this wasn't completely adhered down on this side. So that means you're gonna have a little paint bleeding coming through, it's not gonna be a good line. So I'm gonna let this dry just a little bit more. You know, as I'm cleaning the cup out, I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, we can do a gradient clear over this right now before we take the tape off, thus adding more layers of depth. Now I'm gonna take this clear orange that I have and I am going to spray only some of it onto the spoon. So we'll start from the bottom. And as you can see, we're starting to get that nice little candy effect. But we're not going all the way up the spoon. We're gonna keep the darkest and heavy is clear down here towards the bottom. Now again, not thinned out that well, I'm just spraying it straight from the bottle. So now what we're gonna do is peel the tape off. Now this is where having a good pair of needle nose tweezers will come in handy because you don't have to run the risk of putting your fingers on the painted finish. I have enough overhang here, so I'm just gonna peel this back. And now you'll begin to see how this comes together. Now there, you have what I like to call a pretty cool finish. Notice how you've got all sorts of gradients everywhere. You got candies, you got black base, you have terrible tape masking, because as you can see right here, I let that clear dry a little too much, so it peeled up the paint a little bit right there. Same scenario over here. A little bit of that clear got underneath, but the point in fact is, even with not mixed that well paint, and a very sloppy application, you could still understand here, the effects you can get are really cool and basically limited only by your imagination. So now we're gonna head back to this black paint right here, this black spoon I should say, and we're gonna do another gradient finish. We're gonna do two gradient finishes and we'll see how this looks. So right now what I'm gonna do is I've loaded my cup with orange that's been thinned out now a bit more so this way you get to see what a proper gradient effect looks like and I'm going to shoot this spoon with that orange. So we're going from a flat black base and I'm gonna come up this way also. And maybe the sides here. And I'll leave that side alone. And I'm not even for the sake of this video going to clean out the cup. I'm just gonna throw the gunmetal inside with the orange and it's gonna give a little bit of a orange type of effect, but then again, it's gonna probably look a little brown. So now I'm gonna come around this side and I'm going to blend in, or I should say, do some gradient finish from the gunmetal on that side. So from here, I can do one of two things. I can peel the tape off, be done with it, but what I'm gonna do is just peel one part of this tape off. So now I have my black base and with that one part out I'm gonna do a candy over this entire thing or I should say I'm going to spray some clear orange over it and let's see what that looks like while it's still wet why not I'm going to carefully peel this off and here you go see what happens if you're not careful see that clear coat all over the black looks awful so be very careful when you are applying and you are removing your masking tape. With that said, you can see exactly what the finish looks like now. The black in the middle is more of a 
lighter shade, or I should say a darker shade of orange. But the point is, you have another effect here where you have a little bit of candy down here where the gunmetal was. Where the base orange was, it's now just a more intense orange because we used the orange clear coat. And the center that was black is now more of a very dark shade of orange. And you've got your flat black with the really messed up tape line right there. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Make sure that your paint is thin properly. Make sure your air... I'm looking at the microphone. Jeez Louise. You want to make sure your air pressure is high enough but not too high. Some people like to spray around 20 PSI. For me, that's low, but it works for others. As long as your paint is mixed properly, which is another point, you shouldn't have much of an issue and your wrist and hand movement is to compensate for the speed that you're doing. You should be okay. And make sure that the tape you're using is adhered properly all around the edges. It's nice and flat. Don't press it too much because then some of the adhesive from the tape will come off if you're using really junky tape, which I would advise another point don't use garbage tape. Use something that's specifically for this kind of thing. Masking tape, like the yellow stuff you get at a, at a department store, it's not a good idea. Sometimes that stuff may rip the paint right off or it may leave glue behind. Definitely don't use duct tape. That's a big no. Should be obvious, but sometimes people make mistakes when they're first starting out. Not even scotch tape for that matter. You kind of can, but I would be very careful with it. That stuff sometimes can leave residue and it may not peel off completely. It could end up splitting and then you end up having part of it covered. And then when you're trying to peel the other part off, you could scrape the paint and it's a big mess. As I mentioned before, when you do a gradient paint finish like this, the ideas are really endless. It's up to you. What you just saw right here was just me going on the fly. You can use different shapes. So if you want to mask, let's say hearts into a Gundam or a model kit, you can put hearts there. Just make sure that whatever color you're doing as your base is the color you want the actual finished design to be. So let's say if you want pink hearts, you wanna make sure you paint the base pink, then you mask it, then you paint everything else around it. So when you peel that tape off, that heart is going to be pink. And that goes for any designs that you wanna be able to do. If you wanna practice with layering different types of effects, well, you just saw that right now. Make sure that whatever color though you want to be predominant or you want to be the detailed oriented color is what your base is going to be. So like as I use that black spoon over there, I wanted the black to be, you know, the detail aspect. It wasn't the entire spoon. I covered the majority of it up. Play with it. Use different gradient finishes. Use clears. Use all those kinds of things. Again, your brain is what's going to limit you. So break that limit off try everything. Some things may work, some things may not work. That's the fun of doing this as a hobby. All things considered, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you saw, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, comment below, let me know what other videos you want to see. And considering the fact that this was a viewer submission, well, who knows, maybe the next thing you ask for will be the next video I do. Till then, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day.